In this video, we'll tune the motor for the lowest possible position error using Sigma Win Plus version 7. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. Here's a quick preview. To get the lowest possible position error, use Mode 1 Auto Tuning, then set Feed Forward PN109 to 100%. The error during acceleration and deceleration can be further decreased using Custom Tuning again with mode 1. Please follow along with me to implement this on the z-axis of the demo. In the previous videos we tuned the x and y axis down to a settling time of 3 milliseconds within a 0 0.01 degree position complete width. The z-axis however we had decided we would tune for the lowest possible position error simulating those applications where it's most important to follow the commanded profile more than it is to stop quickly. That kind of application is often what we'd call an electronic cam application, such as a rotary knife, where it's the profile that you need to follow. Tuning for lowest position error is really just a slight deviation from the normal auto-tuning procedure you need to select mode 1 instead of the default mode 2. They call that standard. After that's complete, you'd set feed forward to 100. And if you need even lower position error, you can use custom tuning. These are the three things that we've already done. So let's begin using auto tuning on mode number 1, standard. There are a few parameters we should check before we start doing auto tuning on the Z axis. So let's open the parameters. And the ones I'm thinking of are the PN500s. First of all, the position deviation overflow alarm. Looks like that's already set so that we don't get those errors. But also right below that position completed width, just so we have a fair comparison to the other two axes, let's set that one to 466 encoder pulses, one hundredth of a degree, 0 0.01 degrees. I'll write that in there. And now the most important parameter to check before you do auto tuning is the feed forward level PN109. This is especially important if you had possibly set the feed forward along with tuning less. You don't want that feed forward helping the auto tuning result. Now I think we're ready to go into auto tuning down here to tuning and we're already out of tuning list mode from the previous video and it looks like a moment of inertia ratio we had previously set in that video to 2600, which is very close. We could use that, but we should measure that directly. Now, why is this grayed out? It must be that there is another window or function conflicting with this. So let me close everything else out. Let's save that. And also I check, I don't have the servo on through the remote IO. So let's come in here again, go to tuning. Okay, now we can execute moment of inertia ratio. I'll start with the default. Just run through this real quick. There, I do like to look at it. And I like to listen to it. I think this might be the last one. 2659, we got 2584. And 2584 is our final result. That was pretty close to the 2600 we had in there. Let's finish this out, update this. Finish that, okay, software reset. And we're ready to do the auto tuning. Okay, here's where we need to choose the mode instead of two for positioning, choose number one standard. The mechanism should still be chosen the most appropriately possible. Rigid model works on these demos. Start with the default. Notice here as a reminder, when you choose mode number one, that means that model following control is off and also vibration suppression will not be available in mode number one. The mechanism selection will make sure that your bandwidths remain proportional in the position, speed, and torque loop. And as I pointed out, be sure that you do auto tuning with the feed forward set to zero. Let's go ahead and execute this auto tuning. Yes, confirm, and now we need to use program jog again. 
program jog. Okay, and this is still set up from a previous video. We need to be sure that it's at uh, zero for infinite number of times and run that. Okay. Now we can start tuning standard. And tuning is complete. All right, let's finish this off. That was step number one. And step number two is to set that feed forward. I think I'll just cancel program jog for now, just so I can see this here. And we go to parameter 109 feed forward and confidently set that to 100% for the lowest position error. Let's write that in. And let's see what that move looks like now. With trace, set up the trace, positioning from the start, set that one as we've done before here with high precision. So we can see that position error. Display the settling time, and I'll give it 875. Okay, let's start the trace and get program jog running. One more time here. And look at this result. The settling time is not too bad. It's not too great either, 47 milliseconds. But what we were interested in was the position error. Now these other two axes, I don't think we ever saw such low position error during the move. So this is tuning for low position error. In fact, the position error is so low that the coin signal, the position complete signal, changed state during the move. We could zoom in on this. And even without the cursor, you see that the position error is right there. Zero position error. Now it's not zero everywhere. We can measure it at the maximum. And the maximum position error is... 224, 225,000 encoder pulses. And the torque ripple, I'm getting about 2, 3%. So let's make a note of that for reference in our tuning results table. Advanced auto tuning, mode number one, gave us 47 milliseconds settling time. What did I say? 224,000 pulses and 3% rated torque ripple. And if this is sufficient, you could stop. For example, if this was a camming application, maybe the cut is happening right here where the position error is already zero. So there's no reason in that case to tune any further. But if you really need to follow during the acceleration and deceleration part of the move, you might want to decrease this position error even further. And for that, we would use Custom Tuning. So let's open up Custom Tuning. Advanced Adjustment, Custom Tuning. And before you click past this Custom Tuning Mode selection, be careful, the Custom Tuning menu will attempt to uh, set you back to Tuning Mode number two. So be sure you choose Tuning Mode number one, just like you had in Auto Tuning, so that you don't change the mode and undo that result. So choose Tuning Mode number one here, very important. And uh, let's go next after this. Confirm, yes, you're going to change. You're going to stay in mode number one. Confirm the inertia, and you can start tuning. You notice you are in tuning mode number one, rigid model, and there's only one level here. It's the level for all of the position speed and torque loops. Okay, I think we need to run the motor and start to increase this level. Okay. As we increase it, we hear the sound is louder. And we're hearing some noises there. Let's just graph that once. Quite a lot of vibration, you can see it here. Let's see what we can do with notch filter. 
Let's just look at the notch filter with the edit parameter screen. The notch filters are under PN400. So there we go, PN408. We'll start by enabling that notch filter. And that alone helps, very similar to the other axis. Maybe we can just leave that at the 5000 for now. And let's start a new trace here. Oh, very good. Looks improved. The position error is now 85,000 instead of 220,000. It's the worst case. The settling time was 26 milliseconds. And how's the torque ripple looking? It's gone up as expected. It's gone up to maybe even 5%. So you need to decide how much error is acceptable for your system and for your application. If we want to take this one to an extreme, I could try to increase this further. Now remember I got the other motors up into the 200s for tuning level. Now I've got vibration again, but maybe the notch filter can be adjusted. You complete it. Look at that online parameter. Let's try to dial down that frequency for the notch filter. See if that helps. There, 4600, 4700 seem to help it. Really do have to go by sound. Several frequencies that work. Yeah, I liked the 4200 on the other servo axes. I'll stick with that on this servo also. And let's look at this. 18 millisecond settling time. Let's get a measurement on that error. The error down to 52,000 reference units out of 16 million. That's pretty low. And the torque ripple pretty high. Looks like 8.7. I think I'll turn off the servo here. So just a few comments. This is a very aggressive tuning for lowest position error. And if the application didn't need such an aggressive tuning, I would probably recommend you turn that level down. And also keep in mind, if you have a cutting application or grinding or anything where a surface finish is important, then a torque ripple that's this high is definitely not acceptable. Even though you are trying to follow a path, smoothness of motion is of prime importance in those types of applications. We simply have not decided to tune the servo motors for that type of application. So let's save this final graph. This was Z-axis custom tuning for low position error. I'll comment this is mode number one, no model following or vibration suppression. Okay. Final tuning Z axis, we had 18 milliseconds, about 53,000 pulses of error and 9% rated torque ripple. So after going through all this, let me summarize by leaving you with this table of the auto tuning modes. As you've seen here, mode number one did pretty well for settling time, but mode number two definitely did better. However, mode number one is the best for low position error. Mode number two was okay by some standards, but there was still a lot of position error, although we could get the error between two different axes down to zero as long as the model following control gain was set equal. So what types of applications? Electronic camming, Probably go with mode one. Point-to-point -point applications, I'd probably go with mode two or mode three. If you want to use model following control, then definitely mode two or mode three. And if you need vibration suppression, you're gonna to have to make it work with modes two or three. This demo doesn't have any resonance to filter out. Um, Anti-resonance is not affected by the mode. Neither is the notch filter. We did use the notch filter on all three of these axes. And we were able to use that feed forward parameter 109 in mode number one, uh, that parameter has absolutely no effect in mode number two because we're already using a torque and speed feed forward 
as part of model following control. And one final difference is it says your speed control mode. Uh, that's when the controller is sending a speed command to the speed loop. You can still use mode one auto tuning for that control mode. And that's not available with mode number two. You do need to have the position loop active in order to use model following control and modes number two and three of auto tuning. Position mode is the standard method of commanding motion from the MPIC controller with the PLC open function blocks. We do have an advanced block called Y direct control, or you could send a speed or a torque command directly over Mechatrolink 3 into the amplifier. And in that case, the tuning result could be affected. So I hope this video series on tuning has given you some good insight and some practical hands-on application to harness these advanced features of Sigma 7 tuning. After this, you might want to check out the Tuning Lab videos where I walk through some demonstrations of how to tune machines that are a little bit more complicated than these simple wheels. Thank you for watching this video. For more information on Sigma 7, please go to yaskawa.com. Products. Sigma 7 Servo Products.